welcome back to the lockdown sessions good to have you with me again we're looking at faith and hope and love this week we've been focusing on the theme of faith uh, hope sorry and today i want to explore the connection between the starbucks reward scheme and hope but let me first read to you from ephesians chapter one i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. I enjoy the occasional coffee from Starbucks. Anyone who knows me will, will know that. So much so, actually, that I've joined their rewards scheme, where you, you top up your, your Starbucks card or the app, and every time you buy a drink there, you earn stars. And eventually those stars add up to free drinks. But what we could easily miss about this scheme is that there are all sorts of other benefits as well. So if you like cream on top of your coffee, if you're a Starbucks member, that means you get that for free. You can have an extra shot of espresso if you're looking for a bit of extra oomph in your drink. Or syrup flavorings and all sorts of other things come as added extras to joining that scheme. It's nice to discover uh, benefits that you weren't aware of before. And I think in a more profound way, of course, that's what Paul is describing in this part of Ephesians that I've just read to you. It's a wonderful prayer. I recommend you read the whole thing, chapter one. And in this prayer, God asks, uh, Paul asks God to enlighten their hearts. He wants them to, to grasp the magnitude of what it means to, to be people who belong to Jesus Christ. They might realize some of the blessings, but Paul has seen the riches and the depths of relationship with Jesus, and he wants them to discover it for themselves. And one of the key blessings that he mentions is our theme for this week, hope. He has called us to hope, Paul says. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that we have joined a movement which is heading somewhere. It's almost like we've jumped into a fast flowing river that's taken us forwards towards an open expanse of sea. We are carried along. But Paul wants us to open our eyes and to see the great wide ocean that we've been brought into. That ocean is life in its fullness, a life no longer touched by sorrow and shame, a life where we become fully human as we were meant to be. To have hope is to believe that God is at work in our lives today, bringing us to that place. It is to have eyes which are opened to all the promises that God has given to us and to live our lives here and now in this place, in the light of that glorious inheritance. We are not made for brokenness or sorrow or grief. We're not meant to live lives of anxiety and fear. We are called to more than that. And that calling compels us not to give up. It unsettles us when we start getting too comfortable where we are and it delights us with an image of what might be. So let me borrow Paul's prayer for you today. And let me pray that Jesus himself will open the eyes of your heart and your understanding, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, that you may enter into that endless expanse of glorious riches, which is your inheritance. And may all of this hope, all of this vision of what is possible, renew your hope as we live through these uncertain times. And with all of that hope building up within you, may you find creative ways of sharing it with the people around you. You're welcome to join us again tomorrow. This time on Zoom at half past one. Uh, in a moment, you'll see how to get the Zoom invitation if you would like to join. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks for joining me.